Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in today's video of our AMC1 series, we are going to discuss cervical cancer screening guidelines. So cervical cancer is a, a very common type of cancer in women and it is caused by human papilloma virus um, or HPV. Now HPV has different genotypes, some of them are malignant and some of them are benign. So uh, malignant genotypes of HPV include HPV 16, 18, 31, and 33, okay? So 16, 18, 31, and 33, these four genotypes are responsible for causing cervical cancer. But out of these four, HPV 16 and 18 are the most notorious one, and they're most commonly responsible for the development of cervical cancer. Uh, there are two other genotypes of HPV, uh, which are known as HPV 6 and HPV 11, so the 6 and 11 types are benign, and they're responsible for the development of benign lesions like warts, genital warts, but they do not do not cause um, cancer, okay? So in Australia, when do we start screening for cervical cancer, okay? So screening for cervical cancer starts at the age of 25 or two years after the onset of sexual activity. So if somebody starts sexual activity let's say at 18, when the cervical cancer screening will start for that person at the age of 20. So it depends upon whichever is the earlier, okay? And then every five year, a woman has to um, undergo cervical screening up to the age of 74 years. And if up until 74 years, all the cervical cancer screenings are negative, then um, they, you can safely discontinue cervical cancer screening, okay? So between the age of 25 to 74, every five years, all right? How do we do cervical cancer screening? So it's done with a procedure called pap smear and um, the help of a brush. A small sample is taken from a cervical lining. And first of all, the sample is tested for the presence of um, HPV 16, 18, 31, and 33. So first of all, viral testing is done. And if the viral testing is positive, that is HPV is detected, then we do um, liquid-based cytology, which is we examine the sample under the microscope to see if the cervical cells have developed features of dysplasia, which is the precancerous stage, or features of neoplasia, which is basically the cancerous stage, okay? So first of all, viral testing and then liquid-based cytology in which you see whether the cells have developed feature of dysplasia or neoplasia, okay? Now, this was for the general population, which is 25 to 74 every five years, but some people are at high risk of developing um, cervical cancer, and these include a uh, woman with HIV or solid organ uh, transplant. So, for example, renal transplant recipient, liver transplant recipient, uh, they need to undergo um, testing for cervical cancer more frequently. So for, for these people, the frequency is every three years, okay? So HIV or solid organ transplant patient, every three years, they will undergo testing for cervical cancer. Then there's another subgroup which has the highest um, highest risk of developing cervical cancer. And these are women who had undergone diethylstilbestrol exposure while in utero. So DES or diethylstilbestrol was a kind of emergency contraceptive which has now been discontinued. It has been banned, but it was used in the past for as an emergency contraceptives and later it was found out that almost a uh, hundred percent of these um women who were, who were um when when their mothers were pregnant with them and they had uh, and the and their mothers took diethyl stilbestrol almost a hundred percent of these women later on um developed cervical cancer so these patients if you have a uh, if you have a lady who has been exposed to DS exposure in utero, then you need to um, screen them annually for the development of cervical cancer. Of course, these, this is going to be a very rare, um, uh, a very rare uh, subgroup because DS has been long banned because of um, the, because of this side effect. Okay, so now let us discuss um, the actions that we take depending upon the screening results. Okay. So if in the screening sample, HPV is not detected, okay, so you don't go to uh, liquid-based cytology if the virus is not detected, all right? So if the sample says HPV not detected, then you are going to uh, resume your normal screening frequency, which is every five years, okay? Uh, if the sample says 
unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory HPV testing, which means the sample was not enough and they couldn't satisfactorily rule out or rule in HPV. And what you are going to do, you are going to repeat the test in six to 12 weeks. This is because if the sample was um, um, unsatisfactory or insufficient, then you need to allow this much time, which is six to 12 weeks for, uh, for the cervical lining to regenerate so that you can do a repeat testing um, and satisfactorily rule in or rule out HPV, okay? So six to 12 weeks is the time that you need to give the cervical uh, lining to kind of regenerate, okay? So HPV not detected, um, all is good and you will go to repeat uh, the testing in five years. In case of unsatisf unsatisfactory testing, you will repeat the test in six to 12 weeks. What about if HPV is detected in the sample? Okay, then you will think about whether it is the 16, 18 type, which is the most notorious one, or it is it some other uh, genotype, let's say 31 and 33, okay? So once HPV is detected, as I already explained, you need to go to the next step, which is cytology. Uh, where you are examining the cervical cells under, under the microscope for features of dysplasia and neoplasia. So if HPV is detected, but it is not the 16 and 18 genotype, then you, you still need to do cytology, right? But if the cytology is negative, which is which means that if the cervical cells have normal appearance, there is no uh, there are no features of dysplasia or neoplasia under the microscope, then what you are going to do, you are going to repeat the test in 12 months uh, this is because HPV is still there, okay? You have detected the HPV. So even if the cytology is still negative, you still need to keep a close eye on this patient for the development of any, um, you know, any features of malignancy. So you will need to repeat the test in 12 months now, okay? Um, if the cytology says that there is possible or definite low-grade squamous intraepithelial uh, lesion, then you need to repeat the test in 12 months. I'll explain this um, this terminology shortly. So if a, if the test says, um, the cytology says that there is possible or definite low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, then still you need to repeat the cytology in 12 months. Um, not only the cytology, the whole testing, which is HPV and cytology, you will repeat in 12 months. If the cytology sample says that there is high-grade squamous intraepithelial neoplasia, then you need to refer the patient for colposcopy, okay? Colposcopy is basically a biopsy, okay? Cervical biopsy. So um, if, 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 the, if the cytology says that, it, that there is a high-grade intraepithelial lesion, then of course you need to send the patient for colposcopy to kind of um, ascertain whether um, it has gone to, like the patient has gone on to develop the full-fledged cancer, okay? So that's why in case of high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, you will refer the patient for colposcopy. And if you have unsatisfactory cytology, then you will need to repeat the test in six to 12 weeks, okay? So let me just explain to you what low-grade and high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion mean. So if you look at the slide here, this is the normal cervical lining. Um, this is how normal cervical cells appear. So if you, let's just zoom it a bit. So if you look at these cells here, you can see that these cells are really small nuclei and like a normal nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. And this is how like the normal cells appear in the cervix. This is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia one this slide here, okay? If you look at the cells here now, you can see that the nucleus, it has considerably increased in size and there is low nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio, okay? Uh, you don't need to go into the detail of histology because I'll not be testing you uh, on histology in, in MC1, but it's just for your own understanding so that you can you know better understand and memorize the screening guidelines. So in case of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia one, which is basically low-grade dysplasia, you can see that the cells and their nuclei are now larger in appearance and they have um, kind of occupied most of the cell and there is a little bit cytoplasm around these nuclei, which is one of the feature of dysplasia. But this is basically, most of these changes are here. So one third of the epithelium, if you look at the epithelium, all of this is the epithelium. So and this is then the um, lamina propria. Um, so if you if you look at the epithelium, one third of the epithelium is roughly occupied by 
cells with dysplastic features. So we say this is mild dysplasia because only one third of the epithelium is dysplastic. But if you look at this picture here, more than one third of the um, epithelium is now occupied by dysplastic cells. Okay, and the nucleus have further increased in size. So you have some abnormal cells here and there, but like all of the epithelium is not occupied by dysplastic cells. And this is basically cervical intraepithelial neoplasia too. Uh, this is kind of moderate dysplasia. But if you look at the picture here, all of the epithelium is occupied by the dysplastic cells. And now this is a high grade dysplasia, okay? Now, on the basis of cytology, you can only see like individual cells, but you cannot see laminopropria or, or whether, you know, the dysplastic cells have now invaded, you know, the submucosa, okay? Because as long as these abnormal cells, they are within the epithelium, then this is dysplasia. But as soon as, um, or you can call it as a carcinoma in situ, if the cells have developed malignant features, but as soon as these cells cross the lemon propria and they enter the submucosa, then this converts into cancer, okay? Because cancer is, uh, you label something as, you know, full-fledged cancer once, the, once it spreads beyond the epithelial lining, okay? So if it is confined to the epithelial lining, it is either carcinoma in situ or it is dysplasia, mild, moderate, and severe, okay? So basically, this CIN1 here, which is one third of the epithelium is dysplastic. This is called as low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. And CIN2, CIN3, which is moderate and high-grade dysplasia, and uh, carcinoma in situ, it is known as um, high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Okay, So this is basically the terminology. Um, so if you have a negative cytology, which means that the cervical epithelium was appearing like this, then you're going to repeat the test in 12 months. If you have squamous, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, which means that only one third of the epithelium was just plastic like here, this one here, then you are again going to repeat the test in 12 months. So for normal and low-grade lesion, you are going to repeat the test in 12 months. For normal and low-grade lesion, you're going to repeat the test in 12 months, okay? But once you have a high-grade lesion, like CIN2 here, or CIN3 here, or carcinoma in situ, then what you're going to do, you're going to refer the patient for biopsy because biopsy is the most definitive way to establish whether, like, to do a detailed study of the epithelium, of the um, uh, mucosa, the submucosa, of all the layers and to see whether the cancer has spread beyond the, uh, you know, uh, beyond the epithelial layer, uh, which means that you are now dealing with full-fledged malignant cancer. So for CIN2, CIN3, and carcinoma in situ, we'll have to refer the patient for colposcopy, okay? If you have unsatisfactory cytology, but you have detected HPV-16, and uh, if you have detected HPV, but you have unsatisfactory cytology, then you will need to again, wait for six to 12 weeks because this is the amount of time that is required for cervical epithelial layer to regenerate so that you can uh, repeat another test, okay? Now, you have detected HPV and it is the 16 and 18 time, which is the most notorious one, okay? You will refer this patient for colposcopy and biopsy regardless of the cytology result because these are, you know, the most notorious genotype of uh, HPV and they almost definitely lead to cervical cancer. So you won't bother about cytology results at all. And you will straight away refer this patient for colposcopy. Okay. It wouldn't matter whether they have low grade lesion or high grade lesion. Once you have found out HPV 16 and 18, you will straight away refer this patient for colposcopy. Okay. So all this, this thing here, this is for HPV, um, but not 16 and 18. So maybe 31 and 33 you have detected and then you have to kind of memorize memorize all these um, pathways here, okay? This one I have already explained that low-grade lesion is CIN1 and high-grade lesion is anything above CIN1, 
All right. Now there are some certain contraindication for pap smears. So you can't do a pap smear during menstruation. You can't do a pap smear in the presence of an infection. So if you have any, um, for example, uh, fungal infection, uh, like uh, vaginal candidiasis, or you have trichomona vaginalis infection, chlamydia, gonorrhea, any infection of the cervix at all, you cannot do um, a pap smear, okay? And 48 hours after the use of any vaginal cream, pastries, or douches, you cannot do a pap smear, all right? So contraindication is during menstruation and the presence of an infection, 48 hours after the use of any vaginal cream, pastries, or douches, okay? This was all about contraindications. Now, any woman with persistent and unexplained vaginal bleeding, which is either like intermenstrual or postcoital, should have a co-test. Co-test means both HPV testing and liquid-based cytology and not delayed due to the presence of blood. Okay. So as we said here, that during menstruation, you cannot do an HPV testing. Okay. You cannot do a pep smear during menstruation. But if a woman is having unexplained bleeding and it's not menstruation, but it is intermenstrual bleeding or post bleeding and it is persistent, there is not only one episode, but she's persistently having an intermenstrual or post bleeding, you need to do HPV testing and liquid-based cytology for them. And you should not delay, you know, simply because of the presence of blood. Uh, and, these, and these women should be referred for colposcopy regardless of the results, okay? Because this is, you know, kind of a red flag thing. Uh, you cannot ignore a woman having intermenstrual and post bleeding persistently. So you should do a co-test, but you should always refer them for colposcopy regardless of the result of HPV testing or, um, you know, um, cytology because it could very well be because of, you know, endometrial cancer. So you should not just rely on the test of cervical cancer screening, with, but you should refer this patient for to be, you know, thoroughly tested to rule out any other cancer. But if a premenopausal woman, if you have a premenopausal woman, for example, a woman in her 30s or 40s, and she has only one episode of post bleeding, bleeding, um, and, and, and the cervix, when you look at it clinically, it's normal, and then there is negative HPV testing and negative cytology, which is a core test, then you don't need to refer this patient. This is kind of a, you know, um, a one-off episode. Uh, cervix is normal clinically. HPV is negative. Cytology is normal. So uh, you don't need to refer this patient for colposcopy and biopsy. Okay, but just tell this patient to keep an eye on her uh, symptoms, and if she developed any further bleeds, then we will refer them. Uh, but any postmenopausal woman with any bleed, okay, this is very important. Any bleed at all in a postmenopausal woman is the biggest red flag, and you need to refer this patient immediately for colposcopy and for further testing. Okay. So this was all about cervical cancer screening guideline. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, and if you are finding these videos helpful, please subscribe to my channel and share it with other people. Um, I'll see you soon with the next video.